Andrew Murray here from the Apartment Specialists. Welcome to our channel. Today we've got John here. Hello again. From the team talking about leasehold. Now the last video we did, we talked about leasehold. We covered, what, how would you, you summarise it John? Um, basically weighing up the pros and cons, covering obviously what they should be used for and what they shouldn't be purchased mm. for. And I thought the most important thing that came from that was really that it's not an instrument for freehold as, as in capital gain. Capital gain, yeah, sure. And a lot of people were, I suppose, sold it as that solution, and that's where the bad stigma has come from. Yeah, because there were better options out there at the time, yeah. most likely. Mm. And the probably the, the, where it does suit is income and lifestyle. 100%. Yeah. Cool. So today we're going to be talking about the lifestyle solution for leasehold. So you can see, okay, could this fit you or, or you know, to understand it more. So, John, what have you done? So I spent some time last night looking at a comparable unit that is on the Auckland waterfront that yeah. offers lifestyle. Mm. Okay, so great location, big spacious open plan living, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I took all the costs from the leaseholds, yeah. all the, all the uh, costs from freehold, and basically did a comparison, uh, comparison so you can see cost by cost what is going to be the best solution okay. for that. So um, three bedroom is what the target was. Um, mm. Leasehold, they're around about 575, 600. I found one that was reasonably priced at 575, a three okay. bedroom lifestyle. And I compared it against a freehold one, which was offering the same sort of solution, same mm. sort of location, which was listed around 1.3. And that okay. was one of the better, like the, one of the fairer priced yeah. options. I'd expect them to generally be more than that. So you've actually- Yeah, yeah. I wanted to try and put it in freehold's favor. Um, okay. So I could yeah. see really justify to, to the viewers and yourself um, mm. why these work as lifestyle okay. purchases. Cool. So just really quickly running across the numbers, the things that you want to look at obviously when making the comparison are what you're going to buy it for because yep. that's going to determine what the deposit is mm. and what your mortgage is going to be if you're if you're borrowing. Okay, okay so and obviously the outgoings. So mm. the cost to maintain the apartment, your body mm. corporate mm. fees, um, if it's leasehold, your leasehold component and mm. your rates. Okay. okay. Because what you then get is total yearly outgoings, which is mm. this is what it's costing me. Okay, yep. to either own freehold or either own leasehold. Yep, cool. So let's look at leasehold. I'll just run across it really quickly. Um, so your total outgoings for this three bedroom apartment that was listed at $575,000 was $16,516. Okay. okay, if you look at what you'd need to borrow to mm. finance a purchase like that, it's 50% because it's leasehold, okay? So yep. you're looking at $287,500, which means your mortgage is exactly the same, the other 50%, 287,500, mm. okay? Um, so what you then do is you calculate the interest only mortgage repayment, payments to get mm. your outgoings that are attached to the mortgage of the purchase, which mm. are 14,375. You combine them with the properties outgoings, the, yep. as I said, the body corporate, the rates, etc., cetera, um, and you get 30,891. Okay, so okay. that's the total outgoings if you own that property to run it a year. Yes. Okay, cool. That's and that you've actually underpinned that because if it was principal and interest loan, it would even be, be even higher. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So now the freehold equivalent. Cool, so freehold, as I say, exact same sort of solution, another three bedroom, big spacious mm. open mm. plan, on the waterfront listed at 1.3 million. Now the apartment outgoings are less generally when you're buying a big freehold yep. um, because you're not paying a ground rent, okay? Leasehold. That leasehold component isn't there, yep. okay? So initially, the first calculation, you can think, hmm, that makes sense. So $13,000, as mm. I say, in the spectrum of what's out there, that's actually really good. It's a yep. real fair price. So I've tried to put it in the freehold's favor here. Um, now deposit, obviously you'd be looking at 20% of 1.3 million, mm. which is 260,000. Yep. So slightly less deposit than the, than the leasehold equivalent, okay? Mm. Only slightly less. This is, the, this is where you get caught though, your mortgage, okay? Mm. You've got a $1,040,000 mortgage mm. if you're buying the freehold equivalent, okay? And the mortgage repayments every mm. year, interest only at 5% is $52,000. Mm. So right. where your leasehold um, mortgage repayments were only 14375 mm. the freehold is 52000 and this is what tilts it into leaseholds favour. This yeah. is the big, the big, um, the big mm. differential mm. here. So your total property outgoings for the freehold solution is $65,000, total yeah. outgoings, mortgage yeah. and yeah. outgoings combined for the, for the complex, um, and your leasehold 30890 So less than difference. half. Less and than and half. then the opportunity cost of... 
Yeah, exactly. Because some people are going to say, well, hey, look, um, $30,000 I could make in capital gains by buying freehold, yeah. which if the market is booming, sure, you could. If it's not booming, you're running a risk there. But you've got $725,000 worth of extra capital in the leasehold purchase because mm. you've purchased it for that, that much less. You also did um, interest only for the, uh, for the freehold. Mm -hmm. So if you did interest and principal, that would actually extrapolate. Yeah, it would be more considerably so. more costs. So you yeah. actually mm. try to put it in freeholds favour there. Yeah, yeah cause I want I want I want people to see what we see as the people mm. that run the numbers and do the mm. maths mm. and uh, that's part of our job. A lot of people don't get to the point where they start looking at mm. the deeper figures. So they never you know that they, they never see how it could suit them as that sort of solution. So there is definitely an audience. Um, it, even if you go worst case scenario, obviously a, 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 an unknown that comes into the leasehold calculation is the, the ground rent review, right? Because mm. they, they get reviewed so the cost can increase. Even if you were to, in fact, you'd have to quadruple the ground rent. Yeah. You'd have to quadruple it um, before it would be outperformed by the freehold property. And you still have your $725,000 capital. So it could double, you'd still be, it'd still be outperforming. It could triple, you'd still be outperforming. Yeah. It'd have to quadruple. And which that's a, oh, well, well, yeah. Is, yeah, no, like, what are the odds of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah basically yeah. zero. So, so I hope this has helped everybody see that this, if, if you're looking for a lifestyle purchase, even where, okay, you're wanting to invest money and not have it tied up in what you're uh, where you live, the life, yeah, 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 and that kind of thing. It's something actually worth looking into and going into the numbers, mm. and then going to not just your real estate agent, but going to your accountant, your lawyer, mm. to get a confirmation Crunch from that yeah. and make an educated decision because it obviously right. really works. Dead right, it does. Mm. Cool. Now, John, re I really appreciate that. I think uh, everyone will learn from it. Next week, let's go through the income part of leasehold because you mentioned that was a really good solution, Low outlay, and we'll compare it to a freehold. We're looking forward to doing that. Cool. Cool. And then also from today, if there's any questions, please put them in the box below and we'll answer them for you, as I'm sure you will have some. Thank you, Andrew Murray and from John. Cool. Cheers, guys. See ya.